Good morning, Life Church Warrington, Life Church Goldbourne. It's great to be with you on this Easter Sunday. And uh, the grave is empty, he is risen. And that's the wonderful truth that as a church community um, from across Warrington, we come together to celebrate this morning. And so, uh, Life Church, we miss you all this morning, but we trust that wherever you are today, on this Easter Sunday that you'll sense God's presence, God's peace and God's love upon your lives and that the truth of the resurrection will be something that isn't just an historical fact but it will be something that is part of our lives today as we continue to follow Jesus. As the women in um, Luke 24 went to the tomb that morning expecting to find Jesus' body there the Bible says that two angels met them and the truth that they spoke to then is just as true today in our lives. They said these words to them. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. And this morning the truth of the resurrection is something that's real to us in as much as we believe that because Christ has risen, because he ascended back to heaven and he sent his Holy Spirit, that we in each of our living rooms and uh, kitchens this morning can experience uh, the presence of God as we worship together on this Easter Sunday. So Father, we give you thanks today for Jesus. We give you thanks, Jesus, that you came and that you died and that you rose again, that you defeated death and hell. And Lord, this morning as we come to worship you, we don't need to be fearful. Uh, we don't need to be afraid. Because Emmanuel, God is with us now. And so Lord, as we worship you this morning, we pray that we will sense your presence and your power in our lives. And Father, we pray that you'll receive our worship. We are a grateful people and we love you, Lord. Amen. Let's worship Jesus together.
yes, Lord, you have done great things and you have conquered the grave and you have released every captive. And we celebrate that this morning. And uh, as a community this morning now, we're going to come to a time of communion together. And we're going to eat the bread. Jesus, when he was with his disciples, he said to them, this is my body which is broken for you. And as we eat the bread, in just a few minutes' time, we give thanks for the broken body of Jesus, that Jesus didn't hold back, but he gave it all for you and me, that we could be saved from our sinfulness. And the Bible says that Jesus took the cup, and this cup, this Ribena, it represents Jesus' blood, the blood of the new covenant. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all of our sins. The Bible says that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's all because of the blood of Jesus. So this morning we're going to listen to some prayers from around our churches this morning as we give thanks for the, the bread and the cup, Jesus' body and Jesus' blood. Just listen to these prayers now. And you in each of your homes this morning, as we prepare this morning to take communion, you pray with us and you say amen as people pray and lead us in communion. And when we come back, we will share together as one body. We pray for Lim and all the surrounding areas that they may know that this cup and this bread represents a life that can bear no record of sin, past, present or future, and that there will be no more condemnation for those that walk uh, after Christ Jesus. And that also represents a relationship that can be found in an almighty God. Amen. As we take communion together on this Easter Sunday, we remember that Jesus died on the cross out of a great love for us. The bread reminds us of his body broken, the wine of his shed blood. We are commanded to do this until Jesus returns. Thank you, Jesus, that through your death you have given us life. You have forgiven, healed and restored us. And in you we have a great hope. Amen. Good morning, Life Church. Um, I've actually decided to do uh, a poem this morning for communion. For us, as we come together now in remembrance of you, your sacrificial life given to all, not just a few. This Passover communion is now a symbol of grace. If we'd only believe on him, on you, by faith we're saved. This undeserved favour breaks this sinner's heart. Often no words or sounds to sing, but only tears in part. The love I have for him, for you today, for this inconceivable act of God causes me to once again be still, listen, reflect and stop. We break this bread and we drink this wine in remembrance of all you've done and are doing. In your name Jesus, Amen. Lord Jesus, we bow our heads before you now in humility and ask that you examine our hearts once again this morning as we take communion. Lord, no one can imagine the pain of suffering that you experience in order to help us to get closer to you and to have our future secured in heaven. Lord, thank you for that extravagant love and unmerited favour. Amen. Lord, what a pleasure it is to be able to come before your throne and thank you for your precious gift of grace, Lord. Your body was broken and your blood was spilt that we may be forgiven of our sins lord that we may be repaired lord that you may come and dwell within us lord lord may i never forget what you've done for me on this day lord your victory on the cross lord we love you jesus and we thank you for all you've done lord in jesus name amen so let's share communion together in our homes as we give thanks for Jesus' broken body and Jesus' shed blood. Lois, his body broken for you. Thank you. You need to. See, his body broken for you. Thank you. Lois, his blood shed for you.
has continued to worship Jesus this morning on this Easter Sunday, he has risen.
that was a great video on the Easter story this morning that we've just watched all together. And we're going to do some notices now, just some things to um, help us over this coming week, different ways that we can connect with each other. But one of the first things we want to ask you is, where are you sat right now? Why don't you send us an Easter picture of yourself? Maybe you're with your family. Maybe you're sat with your dog or your cat. But send us a picture and you can send it to Lucas's text number or to office at lifewarrington.com. And next Sunday, we would love to put all your pictures into a montage. I don't know about you, but the other week when we watched mm. everyone's pictures on, in the service, it was really moving. I loved seeing so many of your faces. So please send, a, uh, send us a picture and we'll put those up next Sunday. Yeah, we look forward to seeing your pictures. This Wednesday, Dave Ackerman continues the Logos Bible School. Um, this week we're on chapter three of the book of Philippians. And so the Zoom Bible School happens every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And uh, you might not particularly love having a camera in your face and we invite all of you you don't necessarily have to have your camera on feel free to connect in and switch your camera off or uh, mute yourself we're just really keen that as many as possible connect around the bible during this time of lockdown so that's every wednesday at eight o'clock and then there are a couple of other opportunities to connect during the week on a tuesday morning at nine o'clock and a friday morning at nine o'clock again on zoom and we'll send you the details we have half an hour of devotions and prayer. And again, please don't feel that you need to come and do anything. We just think it's really valuable for us to be able to sit together, read the Bible and pray for one another during this season of church. We've also been connecting Saturday evenings with a quiz night. And we have some winners from the very first week who've already received their prize. So here's a picture of them right now. And here we have the Davis's family and the McDavid's family. And um, they enjoyed their prize, so I'm told. I think Caitlin might have eaten it all, but we hoped she shared it. Yeah, so they were the victors of that. Look out for more quiz nights as um, we move through this time of lockdown. It's a great opportunity to connect with the wider church family. Um, just to remind you that on um, our online service this morning, there is opportunity for you to receive personal prayer. And just below... The, um, the video of this morning's service, there's a button there where you can request, request prayer. So if you click that button, what it will do is it will take you into a chat room with a member of our church um, team and they will then spend some time with you praying. And then finally this morning, we just want to remind you about um, an exciting online event that's happening this Saturday. Andy Hawthorne was due to come to the Par Hall and speak on the subject, the power of hope in a messed up world. Well, obviously, because of where we are, we're not able to meet in a large gathering like the Par Hall, but Andy Hawthorne's agreed to do the event online. So we will send you uh, a link this week to the event. It's on Facebook Live, it's on Saturday evening at 7.30, and also it's a great opportunity to invite people who don't know Jesus to hear Andy talk. Andy's a great communicator, he has a real heart for evangelism, and he will communicate really clearly the message of Jesus to people that tune in and listen. So that's this Saturday, 7.30. We'll send you a link. Thanks for listening. Great to have you with us this morning. Jesus Christ is alive. He rose from the dead and that day, that Easter Sunday morning, that first Easter, when Mary and Mary Magdalene and Siloam went to the grave expecting to anoint a dead body. They saw the angel sitting there and they said, where is Jesus? The angel said, he is not here, he is risen. I submit to you tonight that that's the greatest news the world has ever heard. He is not here. He has conquered the grave. He's alive. And 
Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that there's more proof that Jesus Christ rose from the dead than almost any other fact in Roman history. I don't believe there's a fact in ancient history today so well proven as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But even if there was no proof, no historical proof, no scientific proof, and there is, I would still believe it because I believe this book is God's inspired word and the whole early church went up and down the country preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was the thing that shook the Roman Empire that a man had risen from the dead, that he was alive, that death could not hold him. Christ is alive. He's a living Savior. Good morning, Life Church family. It's a joy to share with you on this Easter Sunday morning from the scriptures as we celebrate together that Christ is risen. And uh, wherever you're watching this morning, um, in living rooms and kitchens, we just want to say that we love you and appreciate you as a church family, and we look forward to um, us being together again. I was thinking um, recently, what, what are some of the things that I miss about life and um, the way that things were before we went into this lockdown? So some of the things that I miss, I miss handshakes and hugs, I miss seeing friends, I miss flat whites at Starbucks or Costa, um, I miss going to the shops with other people and uh, I don't like going to the shop on my own. I miss life group at Tom and Lisa's on a Tuesday evening. I miss my kids going to school, I miss that a lot. Um, I miss gathering on a Sunday to worship and to listen to God's word, to listen to his voice together and to enjoy fellowship. So I miss those things. Something else that I miss, that I'm a lot of us, um, I'm sure, miss, is football. I miss football. I miss watching the games on the TV. I miss going to the games. Um, I, I, I enjoy going down to Stamford Bridge to watch Chelsea every now and then. So I was kind of thinking about that a little bit, and I was um, reminiscing and uh, reminding myself about uh, maybe some of the memorable games that I've been to over the years. I don't know if you've seen on telly, but they've started running old games again, which is never the same because you know the result. But there was one particular game that I looked for on YouTube and I found it. And uh, the reason why I like this game so much is it was, it was the most amazing comeback I've ever been to as a Chelsea fan. Normally, like with Chelsea, if they go behind, um, they lose, we're all disappointed, and we just think, well, same old Chelsea. But not on this day. It was the 5th of September, 1987. So the young, sprightly, 15-year-old 15, 15 uh, Lucas was, um, was off to a football game. And I'd have probably been in my fifth year at school. It used to be called the fifth year, not year 11. And me and my mate John, uh, we went off to the game together. It was, Nottingham, it was Chelsea versus Nottingham Forest. And uh, that was in the days when Forrest and Chelsea were in the same league. And I'll never forget it. Chelsea had a terrible first half. The half-time score, I remember it coming up on the scoreboard, was Chelsea 1, Nottingham Forest 3. And I was so disappointed. I was so down. I was so depressed. And I was like, I said to my mate John, I said, John, there's, there's, like, there's no point. We're, like, we're rubbish. We're losing against Nottingham Forest. And uh, he turned to me and with great Chelsea faith proclaimed to me that if, Chel if, T if Forest can score three, Chelsea can score three. And I remember in that moment that faith actually began to rise in me and I just thought, yes, if Forest can st score three, Chelsea can score three. And uh, the end of that, the rest of that game played out like this, that Gordon Jury, Clive Wilson, and Steve Clark, who'd never scored before for Chelsea, like he was a left back, but Steve Clark scored and Chelsea won the game 4-3. My friend's prophecy came to pass and that was the greatest comeback ever. As we think about the Easter story, I think sometimes people portray the cross and the resurrection as wrongly 
as some kind of comeback story, like as if that when Jesus died on the cross, he was surprised, and that when he rose from the dead, he was the most surprised person in the room. I want to remind us this morning on this Resurrection Sunday that there was nothing accidental, there was nothing about the Easter story, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, that surprised Jesus at all. It was something that was planned and it was something that was in the sovereignty of God. Life Church, this morning we remind ourselves that the cross and the message of the cross was totally intentional. Um, even at, at the start of Jesus' ministry, when he met John the Baptist in the early part of the Gospels, John the Baptist has a prophetic picture of Jesus and he says these words to him. He says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And what John saw at that moment and what was already in the mind of God that, is that Jesus would become a sacrifice for the sins of the world. In John 18, we heard in the devotional on Friday that Helen shared with us about the fact that when Jesus was arrested in John 18, the Bible says of Jesus, it says, Jesus knowing all that was to happen. We, need to, we remind ourselves this morning that the cross and the resurrection isn't a great story of a comeback. It's something that was planned in the purposes of God, that Jesus' death was totally intentional. John 10, Jesus says this, I lay down my life freely. And Jesus' resurrection was intentional. Jesus says, I lay down my life in order to pick it up. Jesus said of himself, he said, if you destroy this temple, I will rebuild it in three days. So the gospel narrative and the narrative of the cross and the resurrection, I remind us today on this Easter Sunday that there was nothing accidental about it. It wasn't like um, a football game where the underdog came right through to win. No, I believe that God in his sovereignty and in his foreknowledge, he saw what was going to happen. He planned it that way because he wanted to redeem the world. And Jesus had talked about this to his disciples and those around him about what would happen. And in Luke 24, we have the account of that first Easter Sunday when the women go to the tomb. And in Luke 24, verses 1 to 8, this is what the writer, how the writer describes that morning. The Bible says, Luke 24, verse 1, it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And the Bible says then, then, then they remembered his words. You see, Jesus had even spoken, the Bible says there that Jesus had even spoken to his followers about what was going to happen. So this was no comeback. This was something that was planned in the sovereign plan of God. And this morning, that is something should, that should excite us, that the narrative and the, and the Easter story is something that God intentionally did because he wanted to redeem us. So three things this morning about the resurrection of Jesus for us as we celebrate on this Easter Sunday again. The first one is this, that Christ is alive. The resurrection of Jesus confirms who Jesus is. There was only ever one man who rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. The birth of Jesus, the unique way that he was born and how it was prophesied, the sinless life of Jesus, his death, his resurrection, which valid, validated all that he said, and his ascension into heaven, which gives us that assurance today that Jesus is alive. All of these things, they validate who Jesus is. And there's no way that you can look at the resurrection of Jesus and think that he was just a good teacher, 
this morning either we believe the words of Jesus as he said them or we have to make him out to be a liar and this morning as we reflect upon the resurrection of Jesus and how it confirms who is who, who he is we remind ourselves that Jesus really did die on a cross the Romans who crucified Jesus they were experts in execution and they knew that um, in crucifying a criminal or someone that had been sentenced to death it was their job to make sure they were dead in the book of Corinthians Paul talks about the fact that over 500 people saw and met the risen Christ and for us 2,000 years later the fact that Christ rose from the dead and this message of the gospel is still preached and proclaimed throughout the earth shows that it is credible and it is true so the resurrection of Jesus it confirms who Jesus is the second thing this morning that the resurrection of Jesus does for us is I believe the resurrection of Jesus gives me confidence in this life and the life to come the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that death and sin have been conquered because of Christ's death and resurrection the Bible says that the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to God he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ and you know at times like this in our world where things are uncertain where um, there can be a lot of sadness where people are fearful where people have suffered loss and we understand many of us the, the different emotions that people feel at this time because of the resurrection today for me as a Christ follower today I have a quiet sound assurance that God is in control of my life and uh, I have a confidence in this life because I know that one who is greater than me has overcome my sin and my death the resurrection the resurrected Christ has been there and as a Christ follower today on this Easter Sunday I remind myself that his sovereign plan is being played out in my life and I don't know what the future is but I do know that Jesus rose again from the dead that he lives today and because he lives today I know that he holds my future in his hand and uh, that's not that's that's not to say that it's anything my confidence is 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 nothing to do with me as a person and I also say that I don't understand what it is for other people to walk their journey as well I, I don't profess to, to to know anyone else's story all I know is my story and, and I'm saying to us this morning that because Christ has risen from the dead and because he has gone before me because he he has been victorious over death and sin then there is nothing in this life that I need to be afraid of and I was thinking about um, Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the in the um, in the book of Daniel Shadrach Meshach and Abednego they were they were three men who had a, a quiet confidence in their God and I don't know if you remember the story, but in the story, when the king says to them they need to bow down and worship the idol, their response to that command was um, an evidence of their assurance that God was in control. And uh, what they said to um, the king that day, they said to him, we will not bow down to your statue or your idol. They said, our God is able to deliver us and he will deliver us but then this is the line that can only come from an assurance that ultimately God is in control of our lives the resurrected Jesus is in control of our lives and this is what they said they said but even if he doesn't we will not serve your God and uh, I believe that the resurrected Jesus today life church can give us that assurance that as we live our lives today that God is in control of our lives and uh, that whatever happens it doesn't take God by surprise and that we can have that assurance that God is with us and he goes before us because he is a resurrected Jesus 
And the final thing this morning I want to say to us is that the resurrection of Jesus challenges us today to be a spirit-filled resurrection people. As we reflect upon the book in, uh, the church in the book of Acts, what we do is we see a group of people that were transformed by a couple of events that had happened at that time. The first, the first thing is that they had experienced the resurrected Jesus. The second thing was that they had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, in fact, they couldn't have one without the other because one of the reasons why Jesus needed to be resurrected from the dead because he'd already made a promise. His promise to his disciples was that it was better for him to go away, to ascend back to the Father, so that he could send the Holy Spirit to be with the church. And for us today on this Resurrection Sunday, I want us also to understand um, the power there is in proclaiming a resurrected Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit, just like the Acts Church did. And uh, they loved to talk about the resurrected Jesus because they recognised that that was the thing that made Jesus unique. The fact, not the fact that he'd lived, although he lived a sinless life, that was unique. Not the fact that he died. There were many people that died on Roman crosses during the period of time that we're talking about here in the Bible. But there was only one man who died upon a cross and rose again. And that's the thing that made Jesus unique. Acts chapter 2, the early church preaches and teaches about a God who was alive. God raised him from the dead, the church say. Acts chapter 3, the Bible says that God raised him from the dead. Acts chapter 4, guess what their message is? God raised him from the dead. And Acts chapter 5, the Bible says that the God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead. Listen, Life Church, the church back then, they couldn't stop talking about the fact that Jesus was alive. And for us this morning, I want us to affirm again that we will be a church that talks about the fact that Jesus is alive. Because there is something that's very powerful about the confession that Jesus is is alive so much so that when paul writes to the church in rome he talks about this confession being the gateway in order for us to experience god's salvation in our lives he says in romans chapter 10 verse 9 he says if you confess with your mouth jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you shall be saved when we believe in our hearts that god has raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible teaches us that that is a step towards our salvation. Because in acknowledging that Jesus rose again from the dead, we're acknowledging that we believe he is who he said he was. And so this morning, as we come to the end of our Easter Sunday service, let's celebrate this morning the great benefits of knowing and celebrating a resurrected Jesus, that the resurrection of Jesus, it validates who Jesus said he was and the resurrection of Jesus, it gives us as Christ followers today an incredible confidence in our God and the, and the faith that we hold and uh, that because we have a resurrected Jesus, we are called to be a resurrection people. Let's pray as we close our service this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you that on this um, Easter Sunday morning that you have indeed risen from the dead. Thank you, Lord, that we don't go to a shrine or a grave to celebrate you today. But all we see this morning in the scriptures that we've read today is that there was an empty tomb. And the angels proclaimed, he is not here. He is risen. And Lord, I pray that the truth of your resurrection will be something that we experience in our lives day by day as we seek to follow you. I pray that we will be known as a resurrection people, a people that make that proclamation that Jesus is alive, that you're making a difference in our lives, and that you will enable us by your spirit to share this good news with others. Lord, I pray for those this morning who are watching don't know you. Lord, I pray that they will make that confession in their heart, that they will indeed themselves believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And for us who know you, Lord, I pray that um, the fact that Jesus is alive will be something that brings us great joy and confidence as we seek to live our lives as Christ followers during this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. We trust you have a great um, rest of Easter um, weekend.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace as you follow him. Happy Easter Life Church. Thank you.